Last time on Square Roots, we experiment with taking coma victims into space, reenact Sandra Bullock's hit film Gravity, reclaim some old space junk, and eliminate an entire species pair by pair. Later, we meet President Zaddy. Hail to the chief, am I right, ladies? Hey everyone, and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. My name is Jim Banks. I'm joined by Matthew Van Sant. Damn it, Jim. You ruined it! John Slutzone Brandon. (laughs) Slutzone, give me your power! (laughs) And Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. And this is a podcast where we play and talk about your favorite classic RPGs, like Final Fantasy VIII. This is the last Final Fantasy VIII episode, guys. Mm Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VIII, Episode Eight, Square oh. Roots Episode Two Fifty Eight. Coincidence? Ooh. Did we yes. make this eight episodes on purpose, or is that just how it came out? That's just how it came out. That's oh. just how it came out. Wow, that's some good. That's some good. Uh, good marketing. Really excited huh? about wrapping up Final Fantasy VIII and getting to our next big exciting game, Kingdom Hearts. 2. Yeah, man. Uh, I had a. I had a kingdom hearts encounter with a stranger the other day do you guys want to hear about it not really yes i do so i um i bought something from facebook marketplace and the person came to like drop it off so i went down and they had somebody with them and they were asking about my uh my uh tattoos and i showed them the vv that i have and the guy's like oh that's the little guy from uh kingdom hearts 2 and i was like yeah he was in kingdom hearts 2 and he's like that game sucks and I was like, I was like, excuse me. <laughs> He's like, that's the worst Kingdom Hearts. And I was like, no, it's not. But I don't, I'm not, I'm not about to get into this right now. <laughs> that's a really terrible thing to say to someone who has a tattoo. I know. <laughs> it's like someone has a Cheers tattoo and you're like, that show blows. <laughs> <laughs> who likes Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts is stupid. <laughs> it was funny anyways yeah wow. kingdom hearts 2 our next game Yay. is that are we announcing that for the first time or did you guys talk about that last week <laughs> well i think we've talked about it quite a bit yeah and yeah i think i was just very depressed last time about <laughs> it uh, <laughs> i can't wait to watch your streams of it john um Boy, I, I I'm not guaranteeing that I'm gonna stream it because sometimes maybe I I, I want to have like a podcast on because I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, maybe you want to play it muted so you don't have to hear. All right, John, you have to promise not to do series. any Donald Duck voice for Kingdom Hearts two. Well, I'm not because it turned out that the McElroys did that bit, even though that's oh, like yeah. a bit I've been doing since I, I was a kid. Everybody's and done a I shitty don't... D- D- Donald Duck bit. Like, it's not. Well, the McElroys I just also was... don't claim it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've done like how many, like a thousand episodes of podcasts altogether. Mm-hmm. There's probably nothing they haven't done. That doesn't mean. That we can't do it too in our own well, way, and I... as long as it's authentic and comes from our heart, uh, I think the audience will think it's new and exciting, and that's why I'd like to introduce my new segment, Munching Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't feel I don't feel comfortable with it. It just seems like such a Justin McElroy bit, and I'm really mad that uh, he stole my bit with before I did it. Well, it really worked down for us podcast. and our sanity. So okay, yeah. So I refuse to do my Donald Duck voice. It's We're going to hold you to that. No. What about your goofy voice? I, I don't think I do a really good goofy <laughs> voice. Like, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, goofy. We're doing this now. Is Goofy here? <laughs> it's, like goofy. it's Goofy has entered the Zoom? Yes. Goofy, oh God, it's goofy. has entered the Zoom. Oh, man. What were well, we even talking know, about? What would you on this podcast? <laughs> I said that. I know. 
Um, how did you or I or anybody level up is probably the question we should how, ask. How, how did you level up, Matt? Beans and barley grow? I Peas? leveled up by watching a f- awesome kick-ass movie called Godzilla vs. Kong. Bung, 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 bung. It was fucking fantastic. Like, those Godzilla movies are so bad. <laughs> um, Kong Skull Island is so good. I had no idea what to expect. And in this one, they just kind of went full popcorn, stupid action movie. And it is a blast. Jim, you also watched GVK. What did you think? I did. I liked it a lot. Um, It got a, it's just, I don't know. It was so, it's so strange because there's like teenage hackers and spaceships and a hollow earth with upside down mountains. It's like, it's so hard to keep track of all the crazy shit that's in that Mm -hmm. movie. Um, But yeah, it's super fun. I enjoyed it. Cool. Well, that's how I leveled up. I don't want to go on and on about the best movie of the year, but uh, go watch Godzilla vs. Kong. What about Vanessa? How did Vanessa level up? Uh, I played a game called Maquette. It was a free PlayStation Plus game this last month, but now you probably have to pay for it if you didn't pick it up. It's a puzzle game, and its essential mechanic is that you're on a level, and in the middle of the level is a model version of the level that you're on, and things that you move in the model get moved in the larger world as well. So, for example, if there's a block in the way of a door... That's too big for you to move. You can move it on the model and it will clear the big block out of your way. Uh, It is a game about a relationship. So you sort of go through memories of this couple meeting each other and how it develops and uh, spoiler alert, how it ends. And as the game progresses, (laughs) you keep getting... Uh, into like smaller and smaller versions of the model and sometimes you leave the small model and go into the big world again but you're still small so it plays with size a lot it was good it's pretty short it's just a few hours you might as well play it I mean why not I found it uh, satisfying like in that it had a little bit of challenge to it but nothing that I felt like I needed to look at a guide for I did one time, full disclosure, it was because I did not realize that I could jump across the <laughs> gap. And it was like, jump across this gap. And I was like, I could have figured that out. <laughs> uh, so so it's 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 uh, Bryce Dallas Howard Ender. What's her husband's name again? Husband. Oh. Why do you give me these pop quizzes in the middle of the podcast to embarrass me? I don't know who <laughs> his name is. Okay, let's see. Bryce Dallas Howard, American actress. She was born in 1981. Her spouth is Seth Gable. Okay. Mr. Howard. Uh, So, yeah, they do the voices of the couple. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. It has a very hipster soundtrack. And if you like hipster music, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> I do like hipster music. Cool. John, how did you level up? I leveled up by finishing the first season of a TV show called Los Spookies. Uh, it's only six episodes, so it's not a very big time sink. Uh, and it's very good. I do. Um, Vanessa, do you want to follow me to my den here? Because cause there's something I got to say. Yeah, sure. Uh, Come with me and and Stan pointed this out. Unfortunately, uh, the show is not filmed in Mexico. The I thought so because I I was going through the Wikipedia and was talking about how Fred Armisen was inspired by Mexico and his going to Mexico City and seeing the goth kids in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how he wanted to make a, a TV show about Mexico City. So I assumed it was shot in Mexico. It was shot in Chile. So Oh, interesting. That is my retraction. Uh, my apologies. Uh, it was shot in Chile and not Mexico. So there, there you go. But it's really good. And Vanessa said, oh, well, how are they, how are they going to use their, uh, making fake spooky thing powers? Uh, how are they going to do that every episode? And and they definitely don't seem out of ideas. Uh, they have, I think they have maybe like 
eight different spooky things in the first season that they do, and they all make sense, and it doesn't look like they've exhausted every spooky idea. <laughs> There's plenty of things you can do to make things spooky, Vanessa. People got a lot nice. of superstitions. People believe a lot of things. You can mm, trick people. I never people. said they didn't, but... I just don't think there's that many problems that can be solved by spooking someone. Well, what happens if you want to scare people uh, by making them stay in a haunted house overnight? Classic. A classic thing, right? If they make it through the night, do they get $1 million? Yes, they do. Oh, this is a classic scenario. Yeah, so so there there was that. A lot of good things. Uh, uh, and it's just very smart and very funny. It's like reminds me a bit of Kimmy Schmidt, which was another Broadway. I think was it Broadway Videos production company. Lauren Michaels production company uh, does it, and uh, reminds me a bit of Kimmy Schmidt, but uh, kind of smarter writing, like definitely a bit smarter than like a Tina Fey show. Although I like I like still like a Tina Fey show. And uh, you told me that it is in Spanish. It is mostly in Spanish. Uh, and it's interesting that that y something you don't see a lot in TV shows is someone being all charming and charismatic in their native tongue. And then like extended scenes of them tr speaking in a, a second tongue. And you sort of see how how much limitations it puts on your ability to express yourself when you have a hard time. Uh, in a second language and how it makes you seem very different. And it just sort of makes you think about how people present to you if they're, say, speaking English and not their native language. And you kind of get judgments about them due to, the, like, clumsiness or, like, awkwardness of speaking. And it's nothing to mm -hmm, do with who mm -hmm. they are, but it's to do with the difficulty of expressing this in, in a language you're not completely comfortable in. And there's That's a, a good insight. Yeah. Uh, as someone who grew up in Quebec, it's something that, that you, I definitely had to deal with. Growing up, because bonjour, bonjour, French is my second language, and I definitely am way more awkward in it. Uh, so Je m'appelle Johnny. Oui. Uh, anyway, I also played Outriders uh, more. That game is very silly. Uh, I really like the main characters' voice acting, like both the, the guy version and the lady version. Uh, so it's very Mass Effect-y. Um, and it's fun. I, I recommend you play it. And it's like multiplayer Mass Effect. So who wouldn't want to play it? Turns out everybody wants to play it because it's free. Well, it's included with Game Pass. Mm. And unfortunately, that means that the servers are not capable of letting everyone play it. So if you try to play it from about, uh, let's say, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m., you will not be able to play. Yeah, I've tried at least like five times in the last two days and I haven't been able to get on. <laughs> They got to figure out how to not have this when your brand new game comes out and yeah. no one can play it because <laughs> it happens a lot and it's a problem. Uh, Jim, how do you level up? Uh, mine was got Deliver Kong also. We're good. I'm good. I leveled up. And Vanessa, has she leveled up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has. Matt yeah, yeah. Uh So we're all good. Quest log time. Uh, Matt has turned into a spooky ghost. He's wearing a blanket. <laughs> Oh, wow. We didn't know he was a ghost, but now we do. That, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he's just trying to fake spook me. All right. Well, oh, why don't yeah. we step on into the quest log? So you remember last time you were fighting Cypher, C yeah, Cypher Rage, and he got very upset at you and did uh, get defeated, but then did, like, pretend to be defeated and then ran off with Renoa. I remember. Mm -hmm. He was like, yoink. He's dragged Renoa to Adele's Chrysalis, which is her weird... It's like a goopy magic worm, magic technology worm. And she's in is goo. Is it a worm? I don't know. It kind of looked call like it a worm. It kind of looked like the way that they do sandworms. But I am open to alternate. Who does sandworm? Final Fantasy. Like it's shaped like the sand. That's what it reminded me of. The way that Final Fantasy has sandworms. Oh, I thought it was just like a, a sort of a crystal cage kind of thing. Right. And she's in jello. Magic jello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she starts reaching through the jello to grab Renoa. And Renoa's like, no! And she's like, yes! Yes! What do you think that feels like? Being in being jello? Being through goopy gel? Being in, yeah, being in that cage full of jello. I bet it's real slimy and cold. 
Would you eat mm. your way out? I don't. I don't think so. Okay, so uh, say you're yeah. trapped. Say you're trapped in a thing of Jello. Mm -hmm. If you start eating, there won't be air in the areas you've eaten, right? So you still have. You have to like eat very quickly to get to where you can breathe. Well, there has to be something there. Well, like nothing exists in a vacuum. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't think of it like like they were staying in jelly. I thought it was like they were like like saran wrapped or like what do you call that? Like vacuum sealed. That's what it looked like to me. Well, that was incorrect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they were. She, they were. She was clearly in jelly. Yeah, yeah. Marmalade, uh, I think, because so... it was orange. So <laughs> are you so you use just your Paddington see... summon. So you, so it cuts to as soon as she's reaching for Renoa, the screen like breaks into the boss fight like animation. And so there's like a bit of a time skip because it goes from Renoa going like, no, to Renoa uh, junctioned to Adele. Yeah, yeah they are one and the same now. Mm -hmm. She's well, like it more looks like a Renoa's like strapped in like a baby Bjorn yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, she's her necklace. Look at my sweet Renoa pendant. I'm getting all my powers from her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she, she she sucks up health points from Renoa. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and... can heal. You have to keep Renoa alive, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if she you can do run kill Renoa or if she runs out of health, it is a instant game over. Wow. Oh, no. I know because I got frustrated. Oh, and no. I, uh, <laughs> I decided to just kill Renoa. How'd that turn out? Not good. Instant game over is what happened. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you got a slicey dicey Adele. Uh, Adele is very unhappy to be defeated. She's, you know, she awakens and she's like, uh, well, let's see. Sorry. She says, we can't let any of our. Ta oh, no, no, you've done that. After Adele's defeated, it's time for Renoa's possession. Altavicia enters Renoa. And L1's like, L1 and uh, what's his face show up? What's his name? Laguna. Mm -hmm. And she's, he's like, uh, L1, do your thing. And she's like, okay. So she like time magics him up. And yeah, I don't know I don't, what the fuck happens here. Yeah, I don't understand what is going on. You just it's a fly. very simple plan. Okay. Here's the plan. Okay. And the simple plan is their favorite band, both Jim the and The simple plan is. Matt. Stacy's uh, mom Ultimacia has, has got to... it going on. Is that? Did I get the band right? No, oh. I don't think that's. I think that's Bowling for Soup. That's oh. Fountains of Wayne. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ultimacia has to possess a sorceress in order to go back in time, uh, using Alone's power. So, uh, they don't want her to go into Adele. That's why you fight Adele. Then, once Adele is defeated, only Renoa is left for Ultimacia to possess. So, once Ultimacia possesses Renoa, they use Alone to send her back in time, uh, which was Ultimacia's goal. But then, Alone brings Renoa and only Renoa back. So, Ultimacia, her consciousness is left back in time. Thus begins the time compression. The reason they want this time compression to happen is so they can go into the future and destroy Ultimacia's body, which is the only way to actually defeat so her. So the time compression is caused by, like, the pull between her consciousness being in the past and her body being in the future? Is that... what is? They never actually say what causes it. Because I thought they said there's, like, a spell, right? Like, Ultimacia knows the... The spell for time. I don't know. I don't know what's well, going on. But yeah, <laughs> she but it said to, that like, she couldn't do powers. it in their time. It had to be done in the past. Mm -hmm. y yeah. And she can go into the past, but only to the current time that they're at, which is why she needs a loan to go even further why, back. Why can she only go back to the present time? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did like when you uh, come to and the time compression is beginning, you can go to a save point and then the save point like spawns 12 other save points. That was pretty funny. Mm -hmm, because everything is all together all at once. And then you do have like uh, you do start fighting all these sorceresses. Like I guess they're like sorceresses throughout history or something. Yeah, I guess they just kind of drop down from the ceiling and they're like, what's up? 
Yo, I'm Sorceress 1. I have a lot of fun. I'm Sorceress 2. There's so much we can do. Mm -hmm. There's one Sorceress who has a great outfit. It was like a big, puffy collar, and it was all orange. Oh, I loved Mm -hmm. it. Style for days. Eventually, as you fight through them, you uh, get to the final Sorceress, which is a worm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're not hard. I didn't have any problems with these sorceresses at all. Why was yeah, that like sorceress one a worm? or two hits? I don't know. Uh, Jim, a time worm because of time <laughs> compression. Oh, oh I Duh. thought it was I'm like embarrassed. A, I thought it was like a, the first, <laughs> the first animal that crawled out of the sea situation. You know, that's yeah, oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Where do the sorceresses come from? Oh, wait, we know that. It's yeah, from... Jim told us. It was God. Isn't there? Yeah, it's from God's left off skin. Yeah, something. something like that, right? I don't remember. Wow. You were so like, I just read it. I'm, I yeah, know exactly I, what's I happening. Mean, I had it that night for sure, but I didn't retain <laughs> yeah. any of it. <laughs> so you studied for the test, you aced the test, and then like a week later, you're like, yep. oh, now I don't it's remember gone. anything. It's gone. Y'all, that's the way to do it. No <laughs> joke. <though. laughs> Although sometimes like someone will bring up a topic and I'm like, I don't know anything about that. And they're like, well... What do you know about it, though? And it turns out I know a lot about it. I just have, like, blocked out that I know something about it. So you definitely know something about the, like, creator of the universe spawning all these sorts of S's. There's only two, right? Two sorts of S's at a time? Is this a Sith thing? Yeah. There can only yeah, be a, a master Sith. and an apprentice? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And eat, when a sorceress dies, she passes her power on to another girl. Yeah. Like the Slayer. But she can also do it whenever she feels like it. Yeah, that's yeah. how it seems. Like they're just handing it off like like a football in this game. How good mm-hmm. would Star Wars two and three be if they had if they were about Steven Glass and not Anakin Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Obi Wan, are you mad at me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, where are all these Tuscan Raiders? Oh, uh, they went for a drive. They're gone. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have their numbers. They're still alive. Don't worry. It's just like on my fridge. I'll go. Uh, I'll go back and get the numbers later but they're definitely alive i didn't kill all the the tuscans what if at the vader reveal at the end like instead of saying no he says the big bad bionic boy has been here baby (laughs) (laughs) i want a miata i want a big boy i want a miata uh listeners if you're unsure of what we're talking about uh check Check your feed for a special episode. It should be in there eventually. And watch the film, Shattered Glass. <laughs> Free on YouTube with commercials. Ooh. Not very many, though, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, Stacy's so, mom has got it going on. You do arrive <laughs> I got it stuck at... in my head now. What do you want from me? John is Idea's house. So hard. And you head to the beach. And there are dead seeds all over the beach. Well, it, it, they keep like coming in and out of time. And they're like, all these dead seeds are from the future. So this is like a glimpse because of time compression. You know, you know how it is. Right. Yeah. Right. The seeds are still trying to defeat Ultimicia all the way in the future, but they are not doing a good job. Nope. Uh, Yeah. And Ultimicia's, then you see like Ultimicia's castle is floating in the air. And there's... I loved this because I was expecting a big old future castle mm-hmm. because we've gone far into the future. It is not a big old future castle. It is a straight up Dracula castle. <laughs> yeah, yeah it is a Dracula cool castle. Yeah. <laughs> it's like super goth. It's a real uh, Resident it has Evil gargoyles mansion. All over yeah. it. I it's like, it's like, love it. It's like Magus's castle in Chrono Trigger. I'm going to make it. A big statement here. This is my wow. favorite Final Fantasy last level. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Just, Final just, Fantasy doesn't have a lot of last levels. Okay, well, there's Sephiroth's cavey place, remember? Where sure. The crater, yeah. There's that, uh, like, floating continent thing where you fight in six. Well, that's where mm-hmm. you fight Kefka. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. There's the, sin. 
mm-hmm. the belly of a whale. Uh-huh. There's that. Remember that weird one in nine, where it's like there's a bunch of bonus bosses you can fight, and it's all like kind of uh, looks like Roman pillars collapsing everywhere. Mm-mm. See, what I remember from nine is that Kuja was just like in the middle of a crater. Uh, I thought there was yeah, but what what happened on that like pandemonium thing? Was it yeah, that's that what I'm level, level? Uh, No, that's no, pandemonium. Though, right? Yeah, that's the one with the flashlights. But I thought there was another one. That's where like <laughs> the uh, like you can get some extra bosses and stuff. Mm. Uh, but Maybe there's... don't you walk up stairs to heaven at the end there? Like invisible mm. stairs through space. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Maybe and ten had on you're on sin. That was kind of mm-hmm. like the last level of 10. 12 was just like you're on on like a big ship. You're yeah. On, oh, yeah. Uh, you're just like there. And then yeah. the final boss is just like some guy. 12 had like nothing. I think yeah. in 15, you just go talk to him on a street somewhere. Oh, hmm. well, that's not, not that exciting. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's about it for all the... Oh, 10-2, uh, you were in... Remember 10-2, you were in the far plane? And you were like, you had all those shitty uh, puzzles. Yeah, I remember that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, remember, there's an organ, and like, not Titus was playing the organ. Oh yeah, I do remember that. And you fought like the tail, and then you fought. Yeah, the middle. yeah. No, I, yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. is my favorite Final Fantasy like last dungeon. Now that you have gone through them all, I agree. I like it. All right. Well, it good. feels very Sierra all of a sudden. It has loads of little puzzles for you to solve. Mm-hmm. But before we get there, there because there's a chain bridge up to the castle. Along the way, there are little portals where you can go back to the world and finish a few side quests. Yeah. Like what? Well, let's finally. I've been waiting for like four episodes to talk about the Shumi Village side quest because it's incredible. I have done the Shumi Village side quest. Do you agree that it's incredible? I do. <laughs> uh, when it when I first like heard about it, they were talking about it, I got really irritated because I thought I was going to go on a journey around the world. But that's mm-hmm. not what happens. Nope. It's a ju- I think you have to like walk outside and oh no, you do have to go to Fisherman's Horizon. That's that's the end that like the one part you do have to leave to do. Why don't you just walk us through it? And then we'll yeah. find out when we get to the end. <laughs> okay, so you go to the Shumi village, and if you remember, uh, Norg was one of the mm-hmm. Shumis, and that you can either turn into a big-handed squid man, or you can turn into uh, a Moomba. And the Moomba is like the ultimate, like if you're a really great person, you turn into a Moomba, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I guess, no, I think the elders are the ones like this very special people turn into. Yeah, but they respect the Moombas as well. They don't think there's anything wrong with being a Moomba. No, in fact, you kind of insult. You're like, oh, that do, beast yeah. there. And they get super mad if you insult it. So, if you, so, okay. So, let, let, let's you walk into the Moomba village, and it's full of Boombas, and it's full of uh, regular Shumi, and it's got, uh, the, like, they're, they're sort of artisans hiding away from the world. And they even the non-elder ones still they still look like Nurg, Norg or whatever with like the the biggish hands. But then there's like the elder elder and he's got enormous hands, but you can't see him because he's hiding him behind his back. And Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, oh, why don't you go help out the sculptor? And so you got to help out the sculptor and you're like, oh, this Moomba's coming to help. And it's like, what, what are, uh, what's up with these red beasts? And he's like, beasts? Did you call them beasts? They are beasts. Did you not see their noble features? Their mm-hmm. gem-like eyes revealing innocence? Their mm-hmm. bright red hair symbolizing passion? Their mm-hmm. spectacular hair signifying power? They're We've soothing. Talked about the hair. <laughs> well, there's two things about the hair, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> They're soothing, adorable cries. They're mighty yeah. hands with incredible strength, and their proud mm-hmm. postures demanding respect. Yeah. He got very, like we were going there and just insulting their culture. It was mm-hmm. very bad. <laughs> so he asks you to find all these stones, and he sort of gives you clues about where the stones could be. This is another like King's Questy kind of quest. Where they're like, he sort of gives you hints, and then you got to look around and find it. And my favorite is the water stone, 
that you have to find. You find one in the in the pond, and you go bring it to him. He's like, "Oh, that's not that's not a large stone. That's just like one we put in the pond." What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's like, "That is a stone. We put it there." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> and one of the stones is like in his in the same room that you start in. Yeah. And you like find it, and he's like, "Oh, well, what do you know?" Well, I think the water stone's in someone's sink too. Yes, they're using it to wash with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and but these stones are all in the village. They're yeah. super close. Yeah. So you, you do this little quest, and then you go to the elder, and the elder's like, well, I know you've been expecting a big reward. And here it is. And he holds his hand out. Mm -hmm. His giant, beautiful hand. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's just empty <laughs> and he's like that's it thank you and i think he gives you like a, a really good item that like uh, it does something with guardian forces as well but he's like yeah well, first squall is like what do you mean that's it <laughs> he's well no they go outside they're like why did he give you nothing and then you could squall you can either as squall you can choose to be like yeah that that was weird what were they doing or be like you know i think the hand was the gift i think in their culture, they let us see the hand. And you'll notice, like, when you first started talking to him, his hands were behind his back. And it wasn't until that we did a favor for him and became part of the village that he gave us the honor. So I think in their culture, it's a big honor to show their hands. And everyone's like, mm -hmm. everyone's like, yeah, that squall, I think you're right. You know, yep, yep. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Cut to back inside the house. And he's like, oh, God, do you think they noticed I didn't give them anything? <laughs> <laughs> we probably should come up with something better to give people <laughs> i just like I, I acted too fast i said i'd give him something i didn't have anything to give him <laughs> oh what a twist so there is a part two to this whoa because you'll notice there's the guy who like builds models, uh, but they haven't fi they haven't finished the statue yet, and they're like, well, we don't have the the, the there's the artisan next door. He doesn't want to help out with the statue because that's not really his thing. He likes building models, and he like shows you various models he builds, and they fall out of his ceiling, and it's just like mm -hmm. a car model from the game and <laughs> stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you go to Fisherman's Horizon after seeing the beautiful hands and as we i think it was cut out of the episode before i love big hands i'm not gonna get weird what? about it this time i'm just gonna say men with large hands to me is like it's one of the best features someone can have if they have giant hands i'm gonna crush on them pretty hard <laughs> johnny i feel the same way i like those long spindly fingers like a spider oh i like the thick i like the hands are like a giant ham you know just those mm. big ham hawk hands John I, likes uh, a thick, meaty paw, and Vanessa likes a slender man claw. Yeah, that's why <laughs> yes. she likes Seymour. Mm -hmm. Although I, uh, I remember once I was watching True Blood, and that guy was on it. What is a big man? Joe Mogli. Joe Mangiolioni or whatever. Yeah, Man that's the one. Manganiello. Manganiello. Mm -hmm. And Deathstroke. I haven't found him particularly attractive compared to the pale floppy haired spindly boys on that show mm -hmm. uh but then there was one scene where he was looking at an iphone and i was like that iphone looks so small <laughs> in his big hand and i was like <laughs> you know i i, I I've, I've become comfortable with being the pocket bear over the years and like comfortable with my size the only thing i regret now is that i don't have giant hands like that yeah you you're like uh, Charlie's uncle in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You're going to start <laughs> taping giant hands over your hands. But, uh, so you can go to Fisherman's Horizon. Do you remember the guy who had that Moomba doll in Fisherman's yeah. Horizon? There's a guy who's like, his house is, it's near where you fought the tank. Uh, in I Fisherman's. believe you, but I don't remember. And he's got a Moomba doll in his house. And he's like, oh, yeah, the artisan gave that to me. He's like, I visited the village and they were super, like, really nice to me. Uh, and you can convince him to go back to the Shumi village and bring that Moomba doll back. 
and you go there and the moon doll comes back and the artisan sees it and just gets inspired. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I built that with Laguna and Laguna helped us all so much and Laguna's so great. And then he goes and decides to help finish the Laguna statue. And I believe that's where you get the Phoenix Pinion, I think, mm. that allows you to summon Phoenix, which helped me defeat the final boss by bringing me back to life twice in a row. Because <laughs> <laughs> my luck stats are high. I just got it from the Elder. Or maybe that, oh, that was the other thing he gave you, right? Okay. That yeah. was, yeah. He's like, oh, also this garbage feather. Don't even <laughs> worry about it. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> uh, well, I forget, there's some other thing you get for doing uh, the second half of the Shumi Village quest. But that's it. That they finish, they finish working on the statue and everyone is happy. The other quests I want to talk about, maybe Vanessa, did Vanessa, did you find the alien? No, I saw him once or twice, but I didn't find him. What was the name of the can... alien in Chrono Cross? Starman? Star? Starry? Starry. Star you? Something like Star that. You? Star you? Starly? Starly? Starkey. 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 You found Starkey, Starkey in this game too? <laughs> uh, his name is Poo Poo. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> <laughs> so there's four places you can see poo poo one you can see him <laughs> flying a ship carrying a cow as vanessa did mm -hmm. and that's, that's next what I saw. to wind hill i saw a sheep carrying a cow right over the field <laughs> <laughs> then you can also find by cactor island in the big desert uh you can find the ship carrying a pyramid and over in near the, what was the name of, oh, Trabia Garden on the island near there, you can find it carrying uh, crop circles. And what was the last thing it carries? Oh, uh, on a beach near uh, Dalit, I think. No, mm -hmm. Timber. A beach near Timber, you can find it carrying an Easter Island head. <laughs> oh. Moai head. Yeah. And uh, then if you go to if uh, as a random encounter near the Chocobo Forest, like the final one uh, on that one continent where it's all forest, uh, you will fight the UFO. And if you break it, it does explode and fly off and it crashes in the crater where Balam Garden used to be. So if you go to that Balam Garden to the crater there, you will get into a fight with Poo Poo. And Poo Poo's like, Poo -poo, hey, Elixir, Elixir, please. And you can either kill him or you can give him five elixirs. And if you give him five elixirs, he gives you his card, which as oh. for everyone trying to collect every single card in the game is definitely something you need. So were that... you trying to collect every single card in the game? No, I just wanted to see poo poo. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, there's also well, uh, maybe just real fast. There are. A few more summons we need to talk about. Oh, that's John's yes. summons corner. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the. That's at the okay. end. Okay, we'll we'll save that to the end. But uh, yeah, so that's I can it for. Cut it. <laughs> oh, there, there's also a research base, the deep sea research base, where it's got a Bahamut. If you want to get a Bahamut summon, mm. uh, you can find it there. This place was wackadoo because it's got this thing in the middle of the room and sometimes it pulses with power and sometimes it doesn't, but you can't approach it while it's pulsing or else you get into a fight. You have to like wait for it to turn off. It's like a red light, green light or mother may I or red light, green light. Yes, it's totally red light, green light. My favorite game as a kid. I was great at red light, green light. <laughs> The, the secret to red light, green light is to not take any unnecessary risks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so red light, you do play red light, green light. And then there's a little mini game where you have to like figure out how to maximize your power usage to get to Bahamut at the basement. But the thing is, there's a trick to it. You actually will not have enough power to get to, to, uh, or no, but not Bahamut, Eden at the bottom, the Ultima weapon, uh, mm -hmm. and get Eden. Unless you bring Zell, because there's one machine uh. that Zell can mash and open without using power. Because you like, there's Who only wants a to bring Zell. But you gotta yeah. bring Zell that way. Then you can fight Eden, and then you can summon Eden, and Eden's one of the summons. And you can defeat the ultimate weapon, which is the second hardest boss in the game. 
so there's that. That's it for side quests. <laughs> we did it. Yay. That's but, how we leveled up. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get back to uh, our beautiful Ultimixia's castle. Vanessa would like uh, to describe this castle. How would you you describe it in a certain way? How would you describe this castle? Goth AF. It is goth <laughs> AF. As you enter, all your commands except for attack are locked, including like the ability it's to really revive people. Fucking annoying. Uh, yeah, because in the second boss, they killed two people, and I forgot that resurrect. I because they're like, oh, I'll just unlock my magic so I can resurrect them. No, you have to unlock magic and the ability to resurrect someone. Mm -hmm. So that was real annoying. Yeah, the <laughs> things that are locked are item, magic, guardian force, draw, uh, your command abilities, which are things like card or yeah, uh, recover, recover or revive. Yeah. I use those mm -hmm. a lot. But what the game doesn't uh, tell you is... Your limit breaks, resurrection, that means via magic or item. Yep. What the game doesn't tell you the is... the ability to save, I'm not done. Okay. And the ability to save. Continue. <laughs> the game doesn't tell you. You can just, like, leave the castle and save and revive people and then just walk back in. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's really dumb. Uh, and you break into two parties of three. I didn't do this uh, so, right at all. I definitely just used one party the whole time and just kind of ran almost straight. I did do some of the bosses, but mm -hmm. very quickly just kind of ran straight to Ultimecia and tried to fight her. Well, that's fun, <laughs> though, because you can run straight to Ultimecia and just you have your attack command. And if you're like, all I need is my attack command, uh, you're welcome to like just go straight to Ultimecia. But if you want to unlock... Your locked commands, you have to fight these different optional bosses. One per command that you want to unlock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I unlocked save, and then I didn't realize until after I had beaten several of them and saved that I could have drawn some good stuff from well, them. So I'm real annoyed get e e about every this whole situation. GF, every girlfriend you missed is uh, attached to one of these bosses. Hmm. So... If you missed any of the, the girlfriends, you can get them. It's the last chance you have to get them because you only have like 10 minutes left in the game anyways. So <laughs> there is. Uh, OK, let's run through the bosses real fast. Uh, Vanessa, do you want to switch off or and maybe Jim too, describing the bosses? Sure. Okay. Jim, go first. Boss. Oh, geez. Uh, first one. Sphinxor slash Sphinxara, the monster on the stairs. Ooh. Oh, am I reading the rest of the text too? Well, I, well don't read it. Describe it. Yeah, tell describe us about it. Describe it from your own experience uh, of your playthrough of this game. Actually, I got. I have. I have a confession to make. I got. <laughs> I had so little magic and have done so little combat in the game. I couldn't get past Adele because she has one. <laughs> any anything that did over fourteen hundred damage killed me because that's all the hp that i had and some like base damage for some of those spells is like 1800 uh, i thought there's a way to give yourself 999 hit points or something it, I didn't there was that. i did it no it doesn't but you have to like you have to have draw a whole bunch you have to have at least enough hp to withstand the attack for it to regenerate uh, yes it doesn't give you unlimited oh, hit points okay. it okay. just regenerates your hit points after each attack yeah so if like anything wipes it down to zero though you're still dead I, I'm sorry for exposing you like that. <laughs> All right, Sphinxar, the monster on the stairs. Uh, Sphinxar is a little sphinx looking feller. Uh, you fight him, and if you keep beating him, eventually his, well, he's wearing like a pharaoh mask. It will fall off. He does have a soft, squishy face underneath, which you can destroy. And once you do that, you can choose which one of your things you want to unlock. Mm -hmm. I recommend unlocking resurrection very quickly <laughs> and magic. That's clever. You're going to need draw if you want to pull those girlfriends. It's true. I guess it would be impossible to draw from Sphinxar. Yeah, for sure. I well, you could Sphinxar go to somebody else first. 
Ifrit, though. Yeah, I think you can actually, yeah, because he's up the stairs. You can, oh, maybe you can't, do you have to unlock the door to the left on the from the other side? I don't know. I think you have to go, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. You know what? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's true. No, because you can go straight to Ultimisia, so you should be able to at least get the one that's in, like, the bell tower. Uh-huh. You can, I think you have to fight a few to get to Ultimisia. Because a lot of them were blocking Yeah, I think, I think I there's like wrong. four, maybe, you have to fight. But yeah, I could be wrong, too. I disagree. All right, oh, whatever. Well. And yeah. I know that you don't, because I actually ran through the whole castle and wound up at her door. Wow. <laughs> and it was like, oh, but none of our powers are unlocked. <laughs> are you sure you want to go through here? And I was like, I am sure I don't. And I went back and unlocked them. Uh, so there's... Tripoint, the master of elements. If you uh, junction thunder to your defense, or Thundara, which I had a hundred of, uh, you get healed every time Tripoint tries to attack you. It's great and very easy. Oh, I very love it. Very good tip. Yeah. Uh, after you defeat Tripoint, uh, who was in the, the cellar, uh, you can then go do the art room where there is a whole art puzzle yes this puzzle is irritating <laughs> uh there's a clock on the floor and you'll notice the clock is a clue because there's one puzzle <laughs> whose name is smudged and then you have to look at all the other puzzle or all the other pa- pa- when i say puzzles i mean painting there's one yes, painting there's a painting that you don't know what it's <laughs> called and it's like what's this painting called and uh, all the other paint- paintings have Latin words as their titles. And then you have to uh, figure out, I guess, based on their location in the room, which Mm-mm. oh, is it's it even dumber than that? <laughs> it is because the clock on the floor is uh, Roman numerals. Mm-hmm. So if the clock was pointed to uh six you have to find the word that has a v followed by an i in it oh okay so like xii would be yeah well okay yeah yeah so eventually you figure out that because the clock's pointing at whatever and whatever and whatever then you can figure out that it's the snooze times garden garden yeah, snooze like- time messenger Sleepy Garden Messenger Illumination. Yeah. So you do that, and then you get to fight Trauma. What's Trauma? Trauma, the metal mama of mayhem. Mm-hmm. Uh, trauma is a big floating golden thingamabob. It's very tough, but if you have the spell Meltdown, you can cast it on Trauma to lower its defense and beat it pretty easily after that. Yeah, I think what Meltdown does is it reduces the vitality more and more each round. And yeah. that means they take away more damage. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you head to the dungeon to face... Red Giant, the magic immune red rage machine. And it is wearing a little metal Speedo. So I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. Red Giant, mm-hmm. hey, you looking good? Looking good. And uh, this is an- basically every boss now is super weak to meltdown. So just use it from now on on every boss and use mm-hmm. it. You can uh, for the last bosses use aura, which will make you use your limit break every round almost. So it's super useful mm-hmm. anyway. So Red Giant, you try to, to hit it with your sword and it's like, fool, your physical attack does nothing. Yeah, I couldn't beat and this then- guy. I had to like. I had to give up on him. You can run away from these guys. You can, but with without if you use meltdown, it reduces his vitality, and then you can easily defeat him with he physical attacks. Pink. Yes, he turns pink, and just use meltdown on every boss from now on, and you will be okay. I'll be sure to do that next episode. Ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you if and I remember Jim. that piece of advice. <laughs> you and Jim are gonna go right ahead and defeat this boss. Agro. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then, so now to 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 unlock the rest of the bosses because they become increasingly like optional and harder to find. This one you have to use your second party to pull a lever that will make the chandelier stay in place, so you can walk across it, and uh... then you get to fight. 
Krista, the Crystal Queen of Crisis. Are these their real names? Uh, <laughs> these names are crazy. Vanessa's name. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris is like a a floating crystal, mm-hmm. like quartz thingamabob. Uh, Big slender fingers, deal. crystal fingers. Big slender, well, yeah, but I'm not into into rocks. Okay. Um. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> meltdown. <laughs> That's funny. Defeat it. Uh, you find the key to the armory, and there you can fight. Gargantua, the armory armsman of armaments. Now, this one starts out like um, a common enemy you'll be able to you'll find like in the desert, where it's just like two hands sticking out of the ground and a little head that's mm-hmm. like sticking out of the ground. And then, except this time, once you defeat the hands and the head, the whole thing comes out. And uh, yeah, this I found this was one of the harder of the twelve. Probably this is the one I found trickiest. Because I think he did have like some big magic attacks that uh, that did some damage. I killed this one with squalls, Reza, whatever that does ten thousand damage or fifteen thousand damage or whatever. Did you, it does. Did you get? I guess he didn't get his ultimate weapon, and because yeah, I, I did his ultimate weapon attack. Jim saw me do it for the first time, and I was like, "What is happening?" Because he does like does nine 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 nine. Now he's like yeah, twirling was, around the boss. Crazy. It's wow. crazy. It like, like eight or nine times. It was really good. Uh, what yeah. was that called? Lionheart? Is that yeah. what it said? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so what's uh, what's after that when you go to the treasure room and you solve a puzzle involving opening and closing lids, which is <laughs> the the answer to the puzzle is one, two, three, four. It's a very yeah. easy puzzle. <laughs> it's one of those puzzles where like one switch affects the two switches next to it. Oh, and gotcha. it's... Easy peasy. Uh, and there you fight Catoblapos, the Cavalier Claptrap of Chaos. <laughs> it's like a dog. I like the screen cap here. It just says, I am Catoblapos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it appears. It looks like a behemoth, but like a fancy behemoth. Uh, and then you head back uh, through this room with a organ in it john did you play with this organ i don't think an organ john i don't think i did what does the organ do i could not figure it out i because it has like four notes on it and i was trying to play like the music that plays on the level on the organ because i thought that might be the solution to the puzzle but it is not there's a door that has like six bars in front of it and each bar is associated with a note but Hmm. only the last note that you played on the organ will move uh so you just have to smash all the notes at the same time and it opens up these bars which will allow you to access part of the castle uh in which i found nothing and so i left (laughs) i assume there's something i could do there i didn't feel like it because there's the whole thing with the bell and the timer if you ring the bell to fight the super ultimate boss maybe that's something after you defeat the super ultimate boss Maybe, yeah. I don't know anything about that. Mm-hmm. I went to the bell tower. There's like a the bell rope, or what's that thing called? That's like the counterweight. I guess it's just called a counterweight. Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's clock. it's called um the hammer, isn't it? No, the... that's what hits the bell. Oh, okay. I think the swinging thing is the counterweight for the clock. Oh, okay. Or the pendulum. Right. That's the thing uh, that you so... have to get onto to fight. To fight. Tiamat, <laughs> everyone's favorite D&D word for devil, since they couldn't put Satan in the game anymore after the whole satanic panic. It, go If you're too young to remember the satanic panic of the 1980s, go back and read about the satanic panic of the 1980s, because it is insane. People thought Satanists were everywhere murdering children all the time. It, yeah. I, I wasn't was allowed to play Dungeons and Dragons because of that shit. Yeah. So Tiamat... Uh, was what the name they came up for instead of Satan to defeat a demon. Uh, Tiamat is the titillating titan of tyranny. And uh, if you don't want to do the the final boss, the Deep Sea Research Center, you can just draw Eden from, from this guy. But I recommend doing mm-hmm. the Deep Sea Research Center because it's fun. 
Yeah. yeah. I like, I like Plus, it. if you get these summons early, you can go to Cactuar Island, mm -hmm. where you can get 20 AP points per Cactuar that you kill, mm -hmm. and level up your summons real fast. Yes. Yes. And then, at this point, you climb up a tower, all the way up, and uh, then you go climb a clock, that the one on the outside of the castle. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You ru run across the hands of the clock. Yep. And then you go fight Ultimecia. And it does, there's a little save point there, and it does say, are you sure you want, you're ready to fight Ultimecia? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. Let's do it. Hey, girl, uh, hey. Yeah, this was very exciting because, you know, we saw Adele, who was the super buff, like, really cool-looking woman, and we've heard about Ultimecia, who's, like, even more powerful. Uh, so I was... Super excited to see what she looked like. Um, Jim or Matt, do you want to describe what we're looking at here? She's tall and like has a long red dress that's open down the center. And she has big, like, I don't know if they're horns or if it's just her hair made up to look like giant horns. I think it's her hair. She has like white hair. I think they're horns. And uh, they look like long horns. Like, honestly. Mm -hmm. and it looks the same as her hair, though. So I think it's her hair. Just made to look like horns, and she has like black Those wings. Are like that lady from Kingdom Hearts, the queen, the evil queen. Doesn't she have things like that? Uh, Maleficent? Maleficent. Yeah, that's a hat. Oh, okay. Um, and she has you know no shoes on. Mommy she's milkers. All tattoo she's you know I wasn't gonna bring up the mommy milkers, John. <laughs> she's got a big old swinging pair of mommy milkers. No. She's, she's not. Yeah, she's not super crazy anime. <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes info they use that phrase all the time in our group chat i wake up in the morning and it's like oh enjoy your cereal with a cool glass of milk <laughs> well it's every who what's the guy that that used it on twitter that, that someone says they screenshotted him just writing mommy milkers was it elon musk no it wasn't elon musk it was some conservative commentator <laughs> that they said <laughs> they someone claims they found him writing mommy milkers <laughs> anyway now it's time for matt's confession i could not beat ultimecia her second form does a final attack when you kill it and it did too much damage for my party to survive and that was that. I gave up. So, by second form, do you mean slut zone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have named mine whatever. What's the so? Walk <laughs> us through the boss fight. First, you fight Ultimecia, and she's just like all oh, hot and laughing at you, and you know when you get when you get there, she's balls. like seed, seed, seed. Seed, 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 seed. I was like, uh, is she okay? She's sick of seed. <sighs> yeah, she don't oh. like seeds. She's real mad at all these seeds. Um, so she does, she's sitting on her throne and she's like, okay, which three are gonna die first? And <laughs> I do have all my girlfriends junctioned to three people. At a time. So there's three useless characters in my party <laughs> or in my group and three good ones. Unfortunately, I never got all three good ones. By the end, I still had Selfie in my party and she was not one of the good ones. She <laughs> randomly chooses your party for you. Yes. And it's not it, one after... of the teams you picked. She randomly chooses no. three people. Yeah. It's really and fucking annoying. You can let the if you have someone who isn't junctioned like Selfie was or Quistus or whatever, you can go ahead and just let them die and they'll be replaced by another person. <laughs> so, yeah, she does use Meltdown to weaken you. Uh, I do have so there's three abilities, command abilities that I've spread across my team. My main three, which is revive and uh restoration i think and treatment or restore and treatment restore will give everyone 999 health uh revive will bring them back from the dead with 999 health and treatment will get rid of any negative status uh effects on them so they're all super useful uh unfortunately i never got renoa in my party so i was missing the restoration one but that's okay i still beat the boss anyways <laughs> well good yeah, for you did you mention that if one person dies uh 
like not a party wipe, but if one member dies and you don't bring them back right away, they'll be replaced by someone else. Yeah. So the, so the key is if you want someone in your party, let the one you don't want die. And I kept trying to kill Selfie. Like I didn't attack her myself, but I never healed her. And she still stayed through the whole damn time. That's really annoying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you, it, once you do enough damage to Ultimisha, she's like, all right, I'm bringing out the big guns here. And she summons her guardian force, uh, which mm-hmm. she doesn't she name at first. The most powerful guardian. Yeah, force. she's like, oh, I've got the most powerful guardian, and it's a kitty cat man. Everyone yep. loves a kitty cat man. It's it's with a his... Ronzo. Yeah, it's it's a it's a Ronzo with his daddy doinkers. Yeah, mm-hmm. and wings. Daddy doinkers. <laughs> Well, you <laughs> what, are, what are you referring to in that image that you're calling a daddy doinker? You'll ha- you know what, Jim? I want you to use your imagination and think <laughs> about the daddy doinkers in all of us. Daddy doinkers in all of us. It's gross, and I apologize. Uh, yeah, so uh, y'all remember that ring that Squall has? Oh yeah, uh-huh. sure. Slut zone. It, that's right. We we all got the opportunity to name it mm-hmm. uh, something of our own choosing. I of course chose Kitty because it looks like a Kitty. John, you chose um, as you have slut said, zone. Slut Zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it turns out that name comes back here. John, yes. Tell me about your experience. <laughs> she does so you you start you don't like i was like why is there a random kitty cat man i kind of forgot about the whole slut zone thing the canon, <laughs> and then suddenly, the canon name is griever right yeah is griever yeah, is yeah, the canon griever. name just, just want to just, just want to make sure that's stupid as yeah slut zone. yeah just want to make sure that's a, that's established yeah so uh then after you defeat her uh after you start defeating griever she does say griever let them bleed or make them bleed however in my case it said slut zone <laughs> make them bleed <laughs> oh no and it was wonderful so uh, she then declares after you beat griever uh, i don't know maybe you should say it johnny i mean it was your experience is that slut zone make them bleed no it's after that she Says, I will become one with Slut Zone. <laughs> she, says, no, she says, like, I junction myself unto Slut Zone or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's perfect. And so, yeah, this Guardian Force transforms into kind of a more buffer kitty man, I guess. Like a kitty with, tank is what it looked like to me. Yeah, like bigger hands, bigger... Claws. He's got like eight Some spidery kind of legs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, Ultimisia, is inside it. Mm-hmm. And then you uh, so hot. just need to keep attacking until its head falls off, essentially. And then she she pokes her own little head up out of there. She's like in its chest. Um, But guess what? What? Fools? That isn't her final form. What? But she's already had nope. three. I know. She has another, more final form. The sexiest form of all. Uh, neither Matt or Jim got to see this in the mm. game, I guess. Mm-mm. Well, Jim watched uh, me finish the game. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, her final form, uh, sh- her face does go away. And instead, she has a glowing light, like, inside her empty skull. Oh, she's one of them it aliens. She's She's one of them it aliens. Uh, Now it makes sense. Her, Yeah. She gets bat wings on top of her head. Her horns go straight out instead of being curved. Uh, She does still have the um, chest element going on. uh, You can say it, Vanessa. She has big white mommy milkers with <laughs> huge blue nips. Uh, uh, Matt, is... you can stop clapping, Matt. Matt. <laughs> Matt is just clapping and clapping. Matt. Yeah, he's just, he's so delighted by what he's seeing. Um, she has two arms and then like 
six other sort of arm things. Hard to really say. They're like they're um, like they're like spider they're like spider legs. Yeah, like spider leggy kind of things. Um short ribs. It's a look, you know? Yeah. Her dress turns into short ribs. Her dress yeah. turns into short ribs. Her dress ribs, does yeah. turn into short ribs. That's interesting. <laughs> she just kinda has like a trunk. It's real, you know. It's a real final boss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is this her final I'd rather form? have a final boss like this than the Final Fantasy 12 final boss, which was just the guy but red. <laughs> I mean, they tend to have good bosses, right? Uh, uh, what's his six? What's his name in six is a lot of fun. You have to like travel up his tower of his body. I think right? that's still my favorite one. I think the design, like, I would love to get that as a, if I didn't already promise I'm going to get like all the worst characters on my arms as sleeves. I'd love to love to get the uh, that design as a sleeve uh 10 had that great cricket at the end which was a real fun twist (laughs) (laughs) that's true (laughs) and nine Uh, had god the ball wasn't it like a big ball no it's a giant like obsidian dude i think oh the ball was like the super secret boss that's right yeah i don't do balls (laughs) (laughs) daddy dorkers (laughs) (laughs) oh it was a big black and white dude uh yeah so ultimicia can draw a powerful spell from her lower half same girl (laughs) (laughs) called apocalypse once she starts talking the battle is over and then the ending happened and I'm a little confused about the ending, friends. I know exactly what happened. That's exciting. Okay. Then why don't you tell me what happened? Because I was, the only part I, I understood what was happening was the VHS tape at the end. But right up until that point, I was like, were people right about the squall getting impaled and dying at the end of the first disc theory? Because this seems to be proven it. No. As you'll recall, before we went forward in time, we were warned by Laguna that it would be possible to lose ourselves in the time stream Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, to cease to exist. Mm -hmm. And the only way to survive that Mm -hmm. is to remember each other and Mm -hmm. uh, keep each other alive in our Mm -hmm. minds. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. See, Matt remembers that. So Didn't he just make that up, though? Does that work? Well, we're about to find it out, does Jim. Work. It does Yeah. So, uh, everything go kablu, and uh, Squall is trapped in, like, a, a big wasteland, like, just a flat desert, and he's wandering around, and he starts to see snippets of Renoa, like, memories of her from the game. But she's but all, like, she- Terminator-y and, like, blurpy. She's blurpy, she's fuzzy, she's looping in Mm -hmm. some places. So, you know, he, like, he can see the memory of her fading. Like, he can't quite picture her features and image. Like, he just sees a blurry face. Oh, it's a a metaphor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he is trying very hard to keep her alive by remembering her, but it's very difficult. Uh So he stumbles around through this wasteland, and then he just, like, collapses because Squall's useless. He's like, whatever, I'll give up. (laughs) Blip. But Renoa has been doing the same thing, only she is actually good at it. So she is, like, thinking about Squall and looking for him, and she finds him collapsed on the ground. And she cradles his little head, and she's like, hey... Squall, our long journey is over. Let's go home. And at that point, they are transported back into their own time, and they're in the beautiful field of flowers where Renoa said she would always be waiting for him. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't no? Uh, that's where Squall said she would. He would be waiting for her. I thought. Well, maybe that's where she found him then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they're back together. Uh, Flowers waft through the air. They do turn into feathers. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I guess Renoa has wings. We haven't really talked about that. Yeah, because one of her limit breaks, there's there's Puff Puff, the usual limit break, but then there's also Angel Wings, which is her like I guess her like her own latent sorcerer ability. What does that do though? 
it, so I used it a bunch because it just kind of makes her cast spells on the boss, but you lose control of her. But yeah, like, she actually yeah. did a lot of damage and stuff in that using that. Yeah, I had her. Out- she out- wrecked Tiamat with with her angel wings ability in my playthrough. Yeah. Uh, so, and all the sorceresses sorceresses seem to have wings. Hmm. The end. No, it's not the end. No. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so, uh, you do cut to a bobbing fishing lure, or mm-hmm. as Americans might say, lure. <laughs> You can, when you called it a lure, I was like, hmm? <laughs> yes, as lure. we Americans say. Lure. Lure. I'm from lure. America. I got guns and like lures. No, we call them goons. Healthcare is communism. <laughs> we love free market. <laughs> and lure, lures. <laughs> we love to lure the foolish John, to the swamp. John, this is an American podcast. You're hitting <laughs> below the belt on the healthcare thing, buddy. <laughs> uh, so, Cypher is fishing with his friends. Aww. I. I I thought that it would cut to that crazy fishing kid. You know, that little side story we got about the kid who was learning fishing from his fishing master. And that's who Cypher was training with and actually turned out to be great at fishing. But no, he's just fishing. He doesn't look like he's on Fisherman's Horizon. He's just like in Balam, I think, fishing with his friends. Uh, mm-hmm. Raijin and Fujin. What are his dumb friends' names? Oh, yeah. Raijin and Fujin. So Cypher is like fishing. He pulls his fish line up and there's like... I guess a teeny tiny little fish or no, no, there's no fish. And he's like, oh my God, I'm stupid cypher. I can't do anything right. Me. And then he looks over at his friends and Raijin has pulled up a fish and is holding it up triumphantly. And Cypher's like, Ugh. and so then uh, Fujin <laughs> pushes Raijin into the water. Yeah. Fish it all. And then Cypher's like, ho, 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 <laughs> I feel better now. Did anyone call Cypher living through this game? Because I sure no. did. Yeah, no, that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know like, how he got there or what the deal is, but I guess he's over whatever it is. The is control of the sorceress. Yeah. So maybe he like worked out his issues. I mm-hmm. mean, we don't actually see that much of him other than being an asshole at the very beginning of the game and then being an asshole when he bursts into, what does he do, fight the sorceress or whatever? Oh, kill and the then president. After yeah. that... It's not really Cypher, right? Like, after that, he's brainwashed Cypher for the rest of the yeah. game. Right. But he obviously is still an asshole because the only thing yeah. that makes him feel better about his failure is seeing his friends fail as well. Yeah, sure. He just likes physical comedy. Like, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. funny. Yeah, I guess that's true. It, it's it's a worldwide language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We see old Laguna uh, standing over Rain's grave, and he's looking at the ring on his finger. And then we get a flash back to young Laguna in the field and Rain comes running up to him and he gives her a ring just like his. And she Speaking puts of... it on her hand and mm-hmm. he holds up his ring and she holds up her ring and they're like, ooh. But speaking of rings, one of the things that I think helped bring back Renoa and Squall together when they got lost in the time stream was that. Uh, the their rings connected. Remember, she wanted a copy of of uh, Slut Zone, mm-hmm. and she had. And you see, like the chain that she has with both Slut Zone and Slut Zone Two on it, and they it like breaks apart. But that's really what was keeping them together was those rings that she wanted. Well, it's symbolic of their connection. Yeah, and, and uh, but it's just like a, a theme. That is going through the end. Like time is a ring. If you think about it, they have rings. The ring that that brings joy to Laguna, even though he lost rain. And he's, he, you see him smiling at her gravestone because he still remembers the joyful times. Mm-hmm. A bell rings. No, oh, that's stretching of Vanessa. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh... And then we see uh, Alone on the hill looking down at Laguna and Laguna's friends, Ward and the other one. And 
alone is like running down towards Laguna and Laguna's happy and everyone's happy. Oh, uh, also and then... also uh Squall saw Squall went back in time and saw the sorceress, Idea getting possessed by the sorceress, because she's like, I have to do it or or else she'll go in one of the kids and I don't want that. That's right. Yeah. Uh Squall had this moment of like visiting his younger self. Mm-hmm. And uh he saw like the little boy and he saw Adele and yeah. Adia. And so sorry, Adia. And uh Matron. Yeah, that's how that's how Matron became a sorceress. Mm-hmm. Because she she uh self sacrifices to but she seems okay after she becomes a sorceress. I guess it wasn't until later that she turned evil because she's still Being like... a sorceress doesn't make you evil. Being possessed by Ultimecia makes you evil. Oh, well, but Adele that... is evil, and that's not because of Ultimecia, right? Yeah, that's yeah. just Adele doing her own. <laughs> yeah, that's she's not evil. She's just sassy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh yeah. So so she my favorite part about that little part of the flashback is she's like, there's only enough room for one squall here. So get out of here, other squall, <laughs> yeah. grown up squall. And also, I guess Squall gave Adia the idea for Gardens and Seeds. It's a whole time yeah, as a loop. Uh, yeah, I was watching you thing. play that, and I was like, "What is going on?" I didn't get. I didn't like any of it. You know, I'm from the. I'm a seed from he's the like, gardens I'm a, that you he's make. Like, I'm a seed from Balam Garden, and she's like, "Seed garden," and he's Ugh. like, "They were your idea." <laughs> and it's like that's what? a stupid idea. Yeah. <laughs> like if I had had the opportunity to go back, I would have called it something different. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what, then... what? What? John? <laughs> what? John? Slut zone. Slut zone. <laughs> no. I you guess have not. Called it Dark Academia Ooh. <laughs> at the Magic Castle. See, it'll be slut zones, but this time it won't be child soldiers. It'll be horny adult soldiers. <laughs> That's a better idea. All right. So, 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 uh, everyone's there at Rain's grave, and then the credits, but. Over the credits, you see a VHS, VHS tape, and VHS tape does seem to show that everyone was alive. It wasn't a fantasy after all. Squall didn't die back at the end of disc one. And I found this really charming. I liked it. Yeah? Yeah, it like starts out with, I guess it's Irvine is filming, and he's like filming the party at the garden. And you see, like, Quistis and Selfie sitting and talking to each other. And he films um, Zell. Zell's eating disorder. He films Zell uh, <laughs> stuffing his face with food. <laughs> He's, like, ravenously eating every... Was that... Is that, like, a... Is he eating hot dogs? Is that, like... Oh, oh yeah, maybe he finally dogs. got the hot dogs. Yeah, is that, what oh. he's, is that what he's doing is shoveling hot dogs into his mouth? So that's the end of his character arc. Is he <laughs> gets he some hot dogs. hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. So we're seeing Irvine film. We see Selfie like go over to him. And then when she comes back onto screen, she's wearing his cowboy hat, which I thought was kind of cute. And then he points uh, the camera towards uh, uh, Zoo and some other girls. And- yeah. And then she's like, <laughs> uh, we see that dog, uh, Angelo. Was that its name? Puff Puff. We see a puff puff running through the hall, and uh, then the camera sort of peeks out onto the balcony, and Renoa's out there, and they're all kind of pointing at Renoa, like, oh, she's over there, look at that. <laughs> and then uh, the camera swings around, and we realize that Squall is out there too with her, and she looks at him, and she holds up her finger and like waggles it at him, and that's the end of the game. Well, no, there's you uh, because the uh, the camera's running out of batteries. You'll see like the little battery thing on the camera. Oh, right. Uh, but you do see if you wait through the credits, there is a little section of them just embracing. Aww. Aww. On the balcony of the seed ship as it flies off to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to the moon. That's where monsters live. <laughs> oh, duh, John. God. <laughs> it's great how that uh, doesn't so, seem to get resolved at all, by the way. I guess monsters just live on the moon and will continue to drop to Earth sometimes? 
Just ask Peter Dinklage. That's uh, a Destiny so joke. I, I didn't get it. So that's the end, and now it's time to decide if we are roundly four or squarely well, against. Well, 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 before that. Wait, wait, wait. You're right. It's not time. Ooh, I'm excited. We did Kay. it, guys. The end of the game. Yeah. Well. You have to decide. Some of us did Do it. you love this summon? Uh-huh. Jim, are you, are you, gonna you send have us to decide. Uh, Vanessa, do you want to send them pictures? or I, I can if you can't. I can help. Okay. Uh, Jim, you have to decide whether or not you're going to fuck this summon. Okay. I will decide if it's a good summon. And Vanessa, mm -hmm. what was Vanessa's? Whether or not she would eat it. That's right. Mm -hmm. How could I forget? How could you forget? Uh, first, Bahamut. It's a pretty good one. He does fly up in the air. He does shoot big laser beams. At classic them from Bahamut. The, it's, it's a classic Bahamut, you know? I mean, it's a fine mm -hmm. Bahamut. Uh, that's it's not a, a big, that's not wingy, a good pingy picture. dragon. Bahamut. Bahamut. There's, so yeah, it's it's a good, you know, it's a pretty good, I'd give it like a three star battle animation. It's fine. It's not one I would go to to show off the power of the PlayStation or like a cool animation. Uh, Vanessa, would you eat this girlfriend? Um,. I don't think so. Bahamut looks like a bat or mm. a lizard. It's black. It also looks like it has like hard scales or maybe even steel plates over it. Uh, you need I don't like those think little should... lobster crackers. Oh, well, wouldn't you put it that way? Maybe I would eat that delicious lobster Bahamut meat. And I don't mind if food is black, like squid ink pasta or something. You brought me around. I will eat Bahamut. Do we think Jim would fuck Bahamut? Because he, he had to step out for a second. So I think we can make this call for uh, him. I'm pretty sure he would. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, would you fall in love uh, with I Bahamut? I am in love with Bahamut. You know, Bahamut's a classic. I love Bahamut with his lasers and his big wings. And I love you, Bahamut. Uh, next up is Eden. Now, Eden isn't sort of your classical, it's not really a classical uh, guardian force so much as imagine a hot lady bod, but with a mm -hmm. city on top, like a future city. And she's like a spaceship with, but with, but with mommy milk. Yeah. The only, it's not even really a hot lady bod. There's just a lady torso with some honk and mommy milkers on it. Uh, wh right. Why? I, I don't know, but this is, uh, I would say it's definitely in the top three, uh, maybe top five of the uh, quality, like definitely a four star, four and a half, maybe star summon because uh, it is ridiculous. It does like first scan the target and you see all the sci-fi stuff and it does bring the target into like a danger room X-Men style with like computer screens all around and then just start blasting it with a laser so this laser is so powerful. Yeah, I guess they're trying to one up like the Final Fantasy VII summons. It does knock. First, it knocks the target off the Earth and then out of the solar system and then into the center of the Milky Way, uh, where it does form a black hole. It's pretty amazing. It's a really fun animation. So I think you mean the mommy milker way. Sorry. Yes, the mommy milker. So way. Final Fantasy VIII is also set on Earth, just like Final Fantasy VII was. And Final Fantasy uh, X. Yeah, All of these games are set on Earth. Like, it's just time to un to admit it, you know? Uh, Matt, could you fall in love with It's tough Ian? to say no to those mommy milkers, but I just don't feel like we're compatible, what with its giant spaceship head. Right. It is a lot the size of a city, which is some people's thing. Like, it's called a macro fetish. Uh, we could ask Sam Elliott about it later. Uh, <laughs> but Jim's here. So, Jim. Hey. Bahamut, would you fuck Bahamut? Um, mm -mm. Uh, oh, what I about think... Eden? Um, See, it's got that hot lady bod, does... but then, like, instead of a head, it's a city. Yes. Yeah, I'll say yes to that one. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Vanessa, would you eat Eden? No, I cannot eat a whole city. Uh, I have tried, and it didn't end well for anyone. Last but not least, 
Jumbo Cactuar. Also, we could talk about Gilgamesh, I guess. No, we did. We talked about Gilgamesh last time, didn't we? No, we didn't. Yeah. But we didn't talk about eating him more. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about. Okay. So first, Jumbo Cactuar, Jim. Uh, it's a big cactuar with a surprise expression and pointy spikes. It does, uh, shoot spikes. It does like show up on the horizon. It's, this is a pretty great animation. I was enjoying all of it. Uh, great summon. I'd say this is definitely a top five summon. Uh, would you fuck Jumbo Cactuar? Uh, you guys know I love Cactuar. Mm-hmm. I have one. Mm-hmm. I have a big one tattooed on my mm-hmm. body. But I. But it's not love. But you, but I don't have that kind of relationship with Cactuar. It would it would not probably be a comfortable. Look at that mouth. Look at those spikes. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mouth do? <laughs> so no, I would say no. Uh, Matt, would you fall in love with the jumbo cat car? Um, seems prickly. Too prickly for Matt. You can only have one prickly person in a relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. Vanessa, would you eat a cactuar? Heck yes. Uh, one thing I know about being trapped in the desert is you're supposed to hack open a cactus and get that delicious water and cactus. You are not. That water is poisonous. It is not good to drink. Do what? not do this. <laughs> But that's the only desert survival tip I know. It's incorrect. <laughs> that water is very bad for you and will make you sick. Oh, no. Oh, no. Then I wouldn't eat this cactuar. Not at all. You can turn into agave, though. All right. Final summon of the game. Gilgamesh. Three wooden arms, three real arms, three swords. Uh, excellent, excellent fashion sense. He does have a variety of attacks. So he doesn't insta-kill all the time. Sometimes he'll insta-kill random encounters mostly. For bosses, he has a, vari- a variety of attacks that he uses. So it's kind of a, a grab bag to see what sort of damage Gilgamesh does. It's a bit of a step down from Odin, but I think the animation is way more interesting. Like you got a good close-up of Gilgamesh unfurling his cape and looking at the enemy and sizing it up. It's it's pretty great. Uh, yeah, I'd give this uh, a definite thumbs up. Now that's what we're rating uh, these as. Uh, Jim, would you fuck a Gilgamesh? Um, yeah. Look at those hands. Yeah, a lot of hands. Um like the like the way he looks, yeah. Okay, Matt, would you fall in love with a Gilgamesh? Mm, I don't think so. I'm just not into the whole three arm thing, you know, six arm thing, whatever. Well, it looks like seven. I thought there was three on each side, but it looks like the other side has four hands. The, so f- the wooden arms don't look like it. Looks still looks like he has his three arms on the side, not like he. Like they're prosthetics. They're just covered by Yeah, cloak. he just has his right hand arms tucked under a cloak. But oh. so that you know that he has those arms, he's put three wooden arms like, <laughs> attached to his back, yeah. sticking out. <laughs> Too much Vanessa, of a peacock. Would you, yeah. <laughs> would you eat this uh, girlfriend? Certainly not. Uh, this is a human man. I'm not going to eat him. And uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, we're that's it for our ranking every Guardian Force. In time this game. for Squarely Against. It is time for Squarely Against. Next time, where are we playing to, Jim? Um, so I was going to talk to you guys about that. So I was thinking we could play to like basically the end of the Roxas prologue and then after you get Sora and go do all the Mickey Mouse Tower bullshit. Sure. So the end of the Mickey Mouse Tower bullshit? Yeah, so okay, so yeah, next time Kingdom Hearts 2, we're going to play until the end. What's the big wizard guy in the Disney canon? Oh, Yen Sid. Yen Sid. Yeah, uh till the end of Yen Sid's tower uh when you learn about all your outfits and stuff. This sounds terrible. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to hate the beginning, John. You're going to hate it. (laughs) All right. Squarely against this game. Jim, are you roundly for or squarely against Final Fantasy VIII? I am roundly for, even though I kind of got stoned at the end. That's not the game's fault. That's my fault. I did not 
really put a lot of equity into making sure I was junctioned correctly or had the right magic. So, but um, I enjoyed learning more about the plot of the game. I feel like I understand it more. Um, and playing it is fun. And especially with the re-release, with the cool uh, cheats. It's neat. Roundly 4, Final Fantasy VIII. Vanessa, are you squarely against the yeah. Roundly 4? Uh, shockingly, to myself, to my co-hosts, and to the listeners, I have come around on this game. Uh, it started out super slow, did not like it, was not into it, and, uh, you know, Squall, as much as I uh, ragged on him the whole time, he actually did have some character growth. And I came to have a certain amount of affection for him, as you would a troubled youth under your care. And I, uh, yeah, I liked it. I didn't think that the final boss connected well enough to anything that was happening in the world. Like, I wish we had seen her more in the game to develop some kind of relationship with her. But, uh, yeah, Roundly 4, Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, play it with cheats and <laughs> things. Matt, yo, are you roundly for or squarely against Final Fantasy? Uh, you VIII? know what? I'm gonna go the other way and say overall, I am squarely against Final Fantasy VIII. You pick this game. Okay. Does that mean that I have to love it? You know, the thing is, is that we're talking about it like, well, the story turned out to be pretty good, or at least entertaining, and it did. But it's not just story. It's a whole game, and the whole system of the game, I just don't like. I don't think it's good. It's bad. And it makes the game unplayable unless you break it or have cheats. And I just don't like the changes that they made. Also, the cast is pretty fucking boring, actually. Like, FYI, these games usually have crazy, fun, zany casts. This game just has a bunch of dorky fucking teens. It's lame. And overall, I enjoyed the plot more than I didn't enjoy it. But that's not enough for me to say that I'm roundly for it. Big thumbs down, Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> John... Yes. What are you squarely against? I am roundly for Final I knew you Fantasy VIII. With the proviso that uh, this game's only fun if you break it. So look up how to break it. You can either cheat, which I but I would recommend looking up ways to work within the system that it creates to make it ridiculously easy. Because it's pretty... That's satisfying in a way I wasn't expecting. Uh, but don't play it like a regular Final Fantasy or you'll be real sad like a uh, 20 year old Johnny was back in the <laughs> 90s. So don't do that. Uh, I do think the cast sucks. I think it has the worst cast of any Final Fantasy game I've played. Uh, so there's that. Well, three had a pretty boring cast, too. Uh, but it's definitely oh, I don't like any of them, even Quistus they're all just boring and they don't do anything for the like yeah. all other than squall and renoa for the second half of the game none of them have any character development none of them do anything dude gets his hot dogs mm -hmm. in the end yeah uh but i really like the game i like playing it i liked the stupid story i hated that they all went to an orphanage together that was Ooh. lazy writing yeah <laughs> but i liked the rest of it a lot story wise so uh although i think the ending was also kind of incomprehensible i wish there's i also bit want to say i think having another game about memory loss be, with memory loss being a big part of the plot right after final fantasy 7 was pretty fucking stupid i'm curious how we'll all get uh respond to finishing like 13 or something that's not a classic i'm, I'm i want to play it you made me play this we're gonna play 13 sometime <laughs> Sorry, this is Matt. a classic. I want to play Final Fantasy Nothing's Thirteen. You. Maybe next year. Matt, you pick the Bard's Tale. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that being true. Twenty twenty two Final Fantasy Thirteen will come to town, or four. One four of those two. I want to play. I'd be happy with either. Probably we should do four and five before we dabble. Okay. With oh, there's 13. still tactics sitting because there. Thirteen does have three parts to it. As well. Ooh, I do want to do a tactics, too. 
<laughs> all right. All three in a row. Vanessa, you put some emails in there. Somebody did. Somebody uh, did. If I did all in there. three Final Fantasy 13s in a row, the full cast would not survive it. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> I think because Matt would murder us. Yeah. One by one. <laughs> one for each game that we play in the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy. <laughs> Starting with John. Uh, I would like to volunteer uh, Matt or Jim to read this email. I'll read the I'll read the first one. Thank you um, very much. This one is from PJ. He says, "Hello again. What is your favorite underrepresented or unrepresented setting for an RPG? We've got medieval fantasy towns, the post-apocalypse and post-apocalyptic fantasy towns in space, like Kingdom Hearts, or should be as settings in games I've listened to you play. But in terms of outside the box and high would, schools, what would you like to see slash see more of in RPGs?" Personally, I'd love to see a JRPG set in the Crusades or in that part of the world, like an Assassin's Creed 1, but good. Hmm. My favorite video game setting is near future. So, mm -hmm. like a Detroit, Become Human. Your favorite game. Or a Deus Ex. But uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be cyberpunk for me to be happy. Uh I just like I like that kind of for whatever reason I like the storytelling of you know just slightly more advanced technology without getting into like huge space operas where things just feel magical mm -hmm. rather than technological. Uh, I also, as everybody knows, love a theme park. I love it when theme parks are in video games, and I think that they should be in every video game. So what I would like is a near future theme park slash resort town, maybe a cruise ship. You know, I just want to I want to have that vacation experience from home and also fight monsters. In the near future. I, uh, you know what I would like to see? I think you see a lot in games, but you don't see a lot in RPGs are like fairy tale settings. Um, we get a lot of like epic fantasy worlds, but we don't get a lot of like little, um, folklore type settings and, uh, it gets pulled a lot, but I think, uh, doing a deep dark forest and like, uh, you know, enchanted castles and, and stuff like that, um, with wolves and whatever you know what i'm talking about i think so uh yeah i would like to see yeah wolves uh, and whatever. just you know more folk taley and fairy taley stuff and kind of less uh gods and whatever anyway that's me what about anybody else well i like a haunted house i like ghost stories i'd love to see more like a combination survival horror RPG, I think would be great. Like, I think uh, Bloodborne does a really cool job of having a really unique uh, kind of. That's more like a 18th century city, yeah, that's super like a gothic. gothic horror, yeah, yeah, that's really fun. Um, I also love um, like turn of the century stuff. Like, I think that um, Bio Bioshock. What was that one? The Infinite. last one called Sky City. Infinite, yeah. Like, that would be a great RPG type place, but also just like uh, more down to earth history stuff. Like, I love one of the things I love in the Shadow Hearts th series is it takes place uh, from the turn of the century to the 1930s. And I think that's just a really cool place for RPGs to be set. I just love the fashion. I love Art Deco. Uh, I just like that. I find that era really interesting. Uh, but overall, I think. Uh, I would really like to see more RPGs set in the world's strongest man competitions. <laughs> John stole my answer. Not 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 the strongest man competitions, but sure, Jim. Like sure. The, like the but I would like to see like a like a horror noir RPG that's set around the turn of the century. Um, and John's idea about the like survival horror slash RPG would also be super cool. That's what I would like to see. Wow. Four different answers. Well, maybe three different answers <laughs> uh, from from your host. So that just goes to show you why we have to have these polls, because we cannot agree on mm -hmm. anything. Uh, can I read the next one? Yes. This is from Brock. Hey, guys. 
I'm a relatively new listener, but I just wanted to let you know how much I'm enjoying your podcast. I got started listening because I love Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, yeah. But once I got was caught up with that, I went back and started listening to all your older content, and I'm really loving it. You guys are funny and thoughtful. I get to somewhat relive the fun of these video games through your descriptive journey. Thank you, Brock. P.S. I have to throw my hat in the ring and say there is no possible way that sin is a whale. There Excuse is a me? <laughs> there is no possible way that sin is a whale. What? <gasps> There's a resemblance, yes, but sin bears as much resemblance to a whale as sphinx bears to a human. Just saying. A sphinx is a human. But we got a cat body. So? Okay, so are you saying sin is is a whale? I think sin is a whale. Well, I agree with you. And a sphinx is a human. A sphinx is a kitty cat with a human head. How do you define something? Like, what is the most important part of the body? The body or the head? The I daddy doinkers or that... mommy milkers? <laughs> what makes a person is the mind, the head, mommy the milkers. ability to speak, uh, the forward fronting eyes. You know, it's like it's the human person is embodied in the head. You can remove the head from the body and it will be fine. It can live a full and happy life. But the human body without a head, that's nothing. The Sphinx is a human. John, I want to take issue with you leaving out what I consider the most important feature, which is big, juicy dompers. <laughs> that's true. Dumpers are important, too. So, Vanessa, put that into your, your speech as well. <laughs> Thanks. Sphinx is a human. <laughs> Matt. Is going to read the sure. next email. This email's from Tyler. Hey guys, even Tyler if Petty. I'm not particularly interested <laughs> in the current game. I will still pop in to hear your level ups because is this? Did you cut a bunch of this out? Yes, I did. No. Mm, okay. Yeah, oh, it was really long. Heavily edited it was email. really long, and it was all praise for us. And I thought it would be too indulgent to read it on the podcast, even though I enjoyed Tyler, reading it very your... much. Tyler, here's your edited email. Hey, guys. Oh, this is the one I read to you earlier. Even if I am not particularly interested in the current game, I will still pop in to hear your level ups because your banter is always enjoyable as hell. I get legitimately bummed out if one of you is missing from an episode. Mm -hmm. All four of you are so unique but relatable in different ways. Yeah. One of my favorite things about the podcast is the way everyone pronounces every name differently, and oftentimes the rest of the team will adopt it that way. We really messed it up this time with Eleni because none of us can agree on what she is named. She's called alone. <laughs> or when Vanessa and John no start singing out of nowhere and drown out Matt when he's trying to carry on and talk about the story. <laughs> Life, baby, Cracks me up every single time. Morning, train, also, Jim's laugh is awfully infectious. Thank you so much, Tyler. We really appreciate your email. Another home again to find Hey, let's talk about our YouTube streams. Jim and I have decided uh, to stream Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories uh, if we can now that it is out on PC. So I have downloaded Chain of Memories and uh, you can expect a episode one of that coming pretty soon uh, on the Square Roots. That'll be fun. On the Square Roots YouTube. Also, Jim, why don't you tell us about the Patreon? Hey, we have a Patreon. And if you contribute to our Patreon, you get access to lots of cool stuff. I never know how to do this. Uh, so at $3, you get access to all of our uh, bonus episodes. What did we just release? Snyder Cut Talk. We did do a Snyder Cut episode um, because we decided to put the real bonus for the month on the main feed. Yeah, so it's not. So that's not behind a paywall. But. Um, and what do they get at the $5 level? They get access to all that sweet content and the ability to vote on a future Square Roots game, which um, the next game actually is the winner of a vote. So Kingdom Hearts 2 is the most recent winner of one of our Patreon polls. Um, and you get to have your voice heard in that with a $5 monthly <laughs> donation. If you'd like to be a patron, you can sign up patreon.com slash Square Roots podcast. We could have played Ooh, and, X. <laughs> <laughs> and one other sweet, sweet bonus is we read the names of all of our patrons at the end of every episode. 
And I'm going to get us started this week by thanking Sean, Justin Ham, Andy Smith, <coughs> excuse me, my roommate was eaten by a T-Rex or Mary Queen of Scoffs, Aaron J.L. O'Toole, Armin Hammer, Marcus Harnsberry, Cassandra, Wow Wow Wee Wah, wow, wow, wee, Squall wah. is Not the Mama, George Brady, the Fitness Gram Pacer Test is multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. And then it trails off. <laughs> Isaac Wright, Andres Rivera, Huxley Iguana's Spectacular Final Fantasy VIII Enemy Reference Failure. I joined Patreon just to vote against Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> I appreciate we it. appreciate you. <laughs> Balam Garden is sponsored by Norg VPN. <laughs> MC Genesis Raps a Dos Equis. Nofford. Get in the corner, Johnny. Christopher Highness. Ian Frederick. Grayson. Selfie Goes Choo Choo. Chief Hazard built a Kingdom Hearts circular conveyor belt for Jim Banks so he can play it indefinitely. <laughs> Rubber repair. <laughs> Rubber Bear by Buggy Bumpers Babysitting Service. John Scala, Bree Girth, Kevin Walter, Vanessa's singiest, dancingest mom ever. Sexy Grandma's Boy Toy Is, Aaron Bachman, Listen Up, Scoot Stains, Stephen Paget, Wash in the Wind, and D. Jethro. Okay, I'd like to thank Eric Garby, Sorceress, Vanessa's Mom, Sergeant Spaghetti, Chris Pignac, please play with my squalls. Uh, they're called Daddy <laughs> Doinkers. Uh, Ryan Miller, Aiden Marriott, Metal Gear Solid 1 in 2021, Triple Triad Tryhard, Nathan Poirot, Vamos Sounders, PJ Ends, Look Nerds. Yeah, I'm late updating my profile name for Final Fantasy VIII, but I've been a busy boy, and you got updated again for Kingdom Hearts. Jake <laughs> Dickerson, Eyes of the Shifter, Chris Ryan, Selfies Labia Garden. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Ton Barry, King's Family Kitchen. Devin Sloan, Matt Jorgensen, Alexander Jokic, GF Junction, What's Your Function, CharityWater.org, Gage La Charité, Do Good Recklessly, Grey Code, Soy Soda Pop, Miguel Torres, Tyler Petty, David Pascal, Witch Coon, Snap Crackle Pop, I'm Chester Cheetah, Zen Master Football, Dr. Fine, say everyone's name, Matt, Squall is a wiener, Newland, Arthur A., my mom, Ari Corpovara, and more like Final Fantasy great joshua bennett zachary train citrus c ryuji kept saying the word oh she said ryuji right bursch jonathan ellsworth joshua w broxon welcome to cute boy jail honk honk final fantasy 8 the only final fantasy where you can have two brothers be your gf the bumpkins cannot stop listening to the man with the machine gun and so can you Race Jenkins, Ward Childress, still just a Zell stan, maybe a Zell apologist. Robert M. Pullum, Fresh Eyes, WWE Mike G, Justin Rash, Cameron Showy, Randy P, Dylan Rowe, Cyril the Wolf, when performing The Stranger, is it technically Stranger Danger? I challenge the other Tracy to a duel to the pain. William Westgard, Joshua Humphrey, David Green, Matthew Casterline, Mostly Rational Person, Jameson, Ethan G. Pearson hails, I'm Commander Squall, and this is my favorite store on the garden. <laughs> Lauren Prince, Nick, Stu Skeel, the RPG luminary, wonders when the hosts will discuss the plot of Miss Marvel, Zebra Delta, and Adam Zimmerman. I did it. I did it. I, I pronounced them all. I did it. I did. Except for Saber. Sabre. <laughs> I would like to thank Tracy, Amanda Douglas, Ross Hartley, Jack Mizell, Alex Delard, Vanessa's Gold Taco Bell PS5, Jason Timms, Andy Best, Go Cry Wolf, Hexagon, Ricky Barty, Ally, CT, and Big T are the rulers of Ron's by Fantasy, also the rulers of the Challenge House. Gunblading Sid, Florian Janice Kramer, Andy M, Sean Gonzalez, Brian Pitt, Tom, Robert J. Defendi, Michael Crawford, I'm only doing this to vote for Kingdom Hearts 2. Well, you canceled the other, <laughs> yeah. the other person out. Chris <laughs> yep. Wilder, Joseph, Andrew Leinart, Sean Walsh, Vanessa's Renegade Cheese Plate, Samu Mitchell, Christian Go, Robert T., Hudson Roth, Hat Ben, the Ben with the Hat, OMG, what is this game? And I have no memory of this game. Hey, I'm going to be right there with you in about 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for this episode of Square Roots. If you'd like to have an email read on the show, you can email us at squareroutspodcast at gmail.com. Come see us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast Group, for smart, cool, very attractive people. Or find us on Twitter at Square Roots Pod. Um, 
please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, Ghana, or wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, everyone. For Square Roots, I'm Jim Banks. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I'm Johnny Brandon. And I'm Vanessa. Bye. 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 Mommy milkers. There's the mommy milkers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa added a note to our picture of Ultimicia in the notes, and it does say the note does say mommy milkers, so <laughs> with a little check mark. So I guess Vanessa's okay with it. <laughs> I checked it out. You guys were right. <laughs>